right guys, um, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to just go through uh, what you actually need to buy and where to buy it from to make soft plastics. Let's get stuck into it and uh, hopefully you find all the information you need. Right, first off, safety. Plus the sole when it's actually uh, microwaved, it gives off a lot of fumes and they're actually quite poisonous. So first thing is a respirator. That's from Bunnings. Uh, it's very good, very cheap. Uh, I think it's about $30. Um, everything here, I'll link in the description exactly where you can get it and how much it costs. Next for safety is gloves. These are just general um, work gloves. They will resist any burning. Burn my gloves a couple of times with plus so coming out of moulds. Um, and you know obviously saved my hands so they're great again from Bunnings a couple of bucks right the tools first thing you'll need uh, is the injectors there's different sizes um, this is I think three ounce and a five ounce this one here is perfect for the stone molds and this bigger one is perfect for the aluminium or multi cavity molds and I'll show you those in a few minutes Next is the eBay special, I think it's $15, uh, the temperature sensor. And basically, I don't know if you'll see this, but we just turn it on. There's a, a red light, an LED light, and it basically tells you the temperature. Um, that is really, really useful um, because you need to have your plaster sole at a certain temperature. After a while, you know how long the plaster sole will need to be in the microwave to get it at the right temperature. Next, the moulds. These ones here are all stone moulds. Uh, these are from USA slash Ukraine. There's lots of different type of moulds here. There's uh, creature baits, there's uh, grubs, there's uh, swim baits, and um, minnows and all sorts of stuff here. Stone moulds, super cheap, delivered from overseas here and the whole stone molds about 40 to 50 dollars even cheaper for some depending on how complex it is and how big it is um, but yeah that's an easy way to get molds you can get customs you can get and there's thousands of different type of molds in there too as well um, you can pick from that already made the next type of mold is a aluminium mold these are great because these ones I've got are, are multi-cavity molds this one's called the jackhammer you can see the sprue and the inlet there. It basically will do four at a time. Um, very, very good. Easy to clamp together. Put it together. Put the screw on. And you don't need any clamps for that. There's another one. This one here is a finesse, like a worm. It's called the um, Midwest Finesse. Um, very good. I actually use these in Swan River. They go really well. Um, this does eight at a time, so you can imagine you can make a whole bag just with one pour. This one needs to be clamped. The stone moulds need to be clamped as well, and it gets to the clamps. Clamps I use are these Irwin Quick Grips. They're fantastic because to release the mould you push this button in, and easy to clamp. It's got wide jaws, so basically get a good surface area to clamp, and it's easier to to clamp in so that's uh, they are ideal uh, they come in two pack all the details are in the description and uh, again they're from Bunnings super cheap next on the list you need quite simply Pyrex cups and the reason you need these is this is what you use to melt your plaster sole they will withstand a lot of heat but the one hint that I'll give you make sure you don't have a cold aluminium top or stone top that's really cold when these come out hot and you put it on the bench if that's really cold these can shatter make sure that that's put onto like a wooden top or a tray that basically doesn't with, uh, retain heat or cold that way you're not going to get that issue the next thing is to the colorants or basically plus sole when you've heated it it goes clear completely gin clear so uh, the first things you can use are these pigments. Um, these are brought from a guy um, and his firm is called A1 Pigments. 
of A1 Australian pigments. I use down in Quinana. They are very, very good. These ones on the right are all chameleon colours. I'm not quite sure if you can see that, but this one here is a white, but it's got a pink or a silver in it. Um, there's a couple others, a gold with a bit of purple in it. Uh, one of my favourites, this one, is actually, I don't know if you can see that very well because there's a lot of light showing on that, um, is actually a green and a bit of a brown type colour or goldy colour. It comes out really nice in soft plastics. Here's your standard pigments, that are standard colours, you get your whites and your pearls, your pinks, golds, purples, all sorts of uh, uh, various colours. They are. That's the sample packs I brought. They are very cheap, the pigment stuff is very cheap, very easy to use, stir it in, and there you go. Right, next thing for colour, uh, the actual colourants. These are... They come in like uh, 30 or 60 ml. These are two fluid ounces, of course, come from America. Uh, bottles, they will last forever. Um, they, you only use a couple of drops in uh, probably three or four drops in one of these cups, and that will be enough. Uh, there's every color under the sun, like here's chartreuse, uh, orange pumpkin, green pumpkin, uh, watermelon. There's watermelon in blue, watermelon green. Uh, this one here is the actual, that looks purple, but it's actually changeable, the motor oil, which we all know the motor oil colours. Um, also, you can get your, your pearls, your iridescent pearls. Um, that's uh, iridescent white. It comes out really nice. Soft plastics come out fantastic. Um, those ones there, I've got a place called MF, which is a, a reasonably popular firm in America. One guy uh, in Queensland, I think he's in Queensland, he's imported a lot of the gear. He actually does soft plastic making himself. Uh, he supplies the market in Australia now. Um, there's a few that do supply plastisol and colorants and stuff to the market, but uh, the difference with this guy is, is that he imports some of the best stuff. Now, it's called Australian Soft Plastic Lure Supplies. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I'll try and put a decent picture in for you. It supports plastisols, colorants, glitters, and lots of other stuff. It's got a Facebook page. If you message him, he'll give you all the details you need. He's a really, really good guy. I've brought it all and I've used it, and it's brilliant. Just to give you the, your soft plastic lure a little bit of shine, a spark, a little bit of something to grab fish's attention, you can go with uh, glitters. These look really good in soft plastics. Um, you can have put, just put any colour under the sun in them. Uh, if you have a look at this one here, this is soft plastic here. I don't know if you can see it very well. I'll try and put a photo in. This is a red with a... Let's try and do this. A red with a red um, glitter. And you can see that. It just looks amazing. And it gives it a bit of depth and a bit of contrast. There's a little bit of contrast as well, but definitely a bit of depth. And it just looks awesome. So you can get so many different types of glitters. These are just a few. You know, there's a bronze, a electric blue, green, nice red. Now that's a yeah, that's a bronze, but you know, obviously a different type of bronze. Gold, green. There's everything. The only one thing is you can't use your standard everyday glitters you steal from your kids' toy box because they tend to basically roll up into a ball or or melt because they can't stand the heat. Here's a microwave. Um, now I was told one thing about microwaves, you don't use the microwave you use for your general heating of your food and plastisol. So you keep them separate. So what I did basically was I went down to Kmart and I got this one for $49. Um, brilliant little microwave, perfect for plastisol. It's only 700 watts, but that's all you need. And it's got a year guarantee, so perfect. Last but not least, probably the most important part is the plastisol. Now I've used several different types of plastisol. Started off in this stuff called a Lumisol. It's probably the cheapest I've brought. It was I think it was eighty dollars for about what's that a gallon? So about four liters or whatever it is. Basically, the cheapest, nastiest stuff that you can buy. Basically, um, heaps of problems with this with micro bubbles. Heaps of problems with it not being gin clear how I like it but the one thing to say it is cheap there's plenty of it you're going to use it for a long time 
my suggestion is you buy stuff like this to start off with. You go through all your testing, all your experimental phases of using colorants and glitters and how hot is this guy. You can, you can burn this plaster sole to hell and throw it away. You know, it's not expensive. But you can go up. The other pl couple of plaster soles I used were this one by You Make It called um, Premium US Plaster Sole. That wasn't too bad. Again, you know, an average plaster sole and an average price. I tried this one and it's all these are all from the Australian market by the way so I don't import it yet from overseas because it's just too expensive but this one's called the, the Lou and Fly Co they're on eBay it was a soft flex that one there again problems with clarity problems with micro bubbles in it and those micro bubbles come out in the lure but again they're okay there's nothing wrong with those now I've just got and you have used uh, this new stuff from a guy I mentioned before uh, Australian Soft Plastics Lure Supplies. He brings in this stuff and it's from the States called a, called a company called Bait Plastics which is probably one of the two biggest uh, plaster sole suppliers in the US. They are brilliant. They are super gin clear like water. They are don't have any bubbles in them. They basically bubble free. They're brilliant. Um, he's got a couple of different uh, types at the moment. This one here is a 212 medium because plus salt comes in soft, medium, and hard. This is a 212 medium, and this one a 312 salt water, which is a bit tougher, a bit stronger to sort of live up to catching or being bit by those pelagic fish. That's a little bit better. That is more expensive than the Alumasol and these other two, but by far the best. The, the, the difference in just basically the micro bubbles, not having to deal with them and get those out, and also the cl um, clarity of the plastics after being cooked is just brilliant. You can have an absolutely perfectly clear bait if you want one. So that is basically it. If you've got any questions let me know. Happy to give you any information you want. But uh, for now guys that's it. If you want to take it up it's a brilliant hobby, lots of fun. Just make sure you're safe with all the safety gear. There's thousands of videos on YouTube on how to do it but uh, it's good fun. Anyway for now cheers guys. Have a good one.